Come on, give God a great big hand. Come on, clap, the, clap your hands to the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We give God glory. We give God praise. Amen. Somebody say, I won't forget. How I many you know he's done a lot for you? I mean, you know, if he, did, if he didn't do another thing for you, he's already done enough. If he, if he never gave you another miracle, the first one was enough. The one where he saved us. The one where he forgave us of all of our sins. Where he delivered us from a world that was just, um, you know what it was. That's why we came on out of it. So we want to thank God for his mercy and for his grace today. As you can see, we're making a transition over into the Family Life Center. And I want to thank the Lord for everybody who has really worked hard to make that happen and make that transition as smooth as possible. Um, you know, I just want you to kind of bear with us with some transitional things. We may have, for the online audience, uh, yesterday we were having some technical difficulties. So if there are any today, then just say it's the devil. That's all. It's just the devil. Amen. Because God is a good God. Amen. God is a good God. And there was a time where there was no live stream. Amen. Time, there was a time when there was no Facebook. I know you may not remember that, but there was a time when there were no cell phones. My daughter FaceTimes me from college now. But when I was in college, I had to go to the payphone booth. The, oh, okay, all right. 25 cents, 25 cents. Amen. Bless his name. Amen. But thank God for technology. Praise his name. That way the gospel can get out to more people. So I want to thank the Lord for his mercy and grace. Thank God for you being here. Thank God for the, the, those that are joining us online. Welcome to Harvest Church of Hampton. Um, I do want to give God honor for son Jesus. Can somebody say Jesus? That's why we're here. Jesus. And, um, and I want to thank him for the Holy Spirit because you need the Holy Ghost in order to live saved. Oh, yes. You, I'm telling you, you, you can't do this on your own. Because this flesh is a mess. The flesh, that means your mortal body, the flesh is a mess. So I give God glory and praise. And I wanted to um, also thank the Lord for our Christian education teacher, Sister Jill Clark. She was teaching this morning out of Romans, the eighth chapter. Can you give her a hand? Amen. The Lord has been using her in Christian education. If you have not been, had an opportunity to see that on Sunday mornings at 930, please, please do. That is online on our website. And on social media. Um, also, I do want to mention for those of you who have been hearing that Harvest is going to Israel, it is true. And uh, we already have 24 people signed up to go to Israel. Um, I want to encourage you that if you're still interested in going, there may be a possibility that there are spaces still available. Uh, it is, all you'd have to do is go to our website to get the information. Uh, but there are some spaces, I think, still available, and, and, and nothing beats a failure but a what? But a try. This is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, walking through the streets of the Holy Land. Amen. So that's going to be December. There it is, December 10th through the 18th of um, 2022. So you have a, a, over a year to plan. All right. Um, one other thing I, I, I want you kind of to allow me this space to do. A couple of weeks ago, I was encouraging all of us, uh, believers and unbelievers alike, to watch this TV show that I was telling you about. It's, it's called The Chosen. And the saints of God, I've been pastoring here for 20, it's not on my watch, don't worry, 25 years. And I don't know if I have ever promoted um, a television show or a particular movie. Maybe I encourage the saints to go see Passion of the Christ. But I want to tell you that this particular, this particular television series called The Chosen is, is incredible. Um, it is not a word-for-word -word depiction of the gospel, but it is. But when Jesus speaks, he says what Jesus says. And uh, it will open your eyes to the reality of of the disciples. It will also open your eyes to the humanity of Jesus Christ. It will let you know that he was a man in a fleshly body and that he was tempted on all points like you and I. And it, every episode, I'm in tears. Every episode. There's two seasons out so far. Every episode, I'm in tears. Sometimes I'm laughing. 
Um, but I'm always engaged. And I know the story of Jesus. I want to encourage you, if you're here today, to go online. You can find it on YouTube and other social media um, platforms. They also have an app called The Chosen App. I would encourage you to get that. Listen, th I am not being paid. This is not a paid promotion. But the Lord has impressed this on me so. I was asking the Lord this week, I said, Lord, should I, should I continue to encourage the saints? And if it was a good restaurant, I would encourage you to go eat there. And if it was uh, you know, a good a deal, I would encourage you to go buy it. But this is absolutely free. How many of you know that grace is free? The gospel is free, but it came with a cost. So I encourage you to go find the, the show, The Chosen, um, and it's just incredible. So on, you can find it on YouTube. And, um, and it's been such a blessing to my wife and I. The show is provided free, but it's, it's funded by the viewers. So there's not a television, there's not a studio that's writing big checks for this show. The people who are watching it have been so impacted by it that they, they, do what, they do what it's called pay it forward. And my wife and I have been paying it forward. Um, it's just been that impactful. So I just encourage you to, um, to find that if you can. You will be blessed. And your, um, and your relationship with the Lord will increase. So give God glory for that. Um, thank you for giving me the time to, to at least give you some, some uh, information about that. Again, no one asked me to do it. It's just been such a blessing. So, uh, for those of you who are our guests today, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, for those of you who are joining us online, welcome. If you've been with us over the last several weeks, you know that uh, we've been studying, the church has been studying out of the book of Romans. And Romans is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful book. Um, last week, we were talking about how God is trying to get behind the paper. We are talking about wallpaper. <laughs> But we were talking about how God is trying to get behind the wallpaper of our outer persona, and he's trying to get to the soul and the layers that lie beneath what everyone sees, and how that um, even after you remove wallpaper off of a physical wall, there are still other layers behind that, and when you get to the base of the wall, there's still yet some glue, some adhesive, some um, what I call uh, unresolved issues that are still on the wall. And it's much like it is with man. When the Lord is trying to get behind the wallpaper of our lives, even after he saves us and we accept Jesus, there are still some, there's still some glue on the wall, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, unresolved issues. And I'll, this is funny. My, um, I, after Sunday service, I, was, I got home and I, I looked at my phone and there was a text on my phone from one of the brothers. And he sent me a text that said, um, this is all it said. It said, Pastor Rob, I still have a lot of glue in me. That's all it said. And I responded to the text, join the club, brother. Join the club. Can anybody relate to that? Join the club. So, um, so last week was a blessing. The, the whole book of Romans, the whole book of Romans is, I, I'm going to tell you this every time. The book of Romans is the ABCs of Christian education. If you want to know how to live saved, read the book of Romans. If you want to know about God's righteousness, read the book of Romans because it's constantly trying to get behind the wallpaper that exists on us. So um, in Bible studies on Wednesday, I've been teaching a chapter a week out of the book of Romans and we're on chapter 6 now. If you have not seen the previous ones, please go back online and find those and watch those Bible studies if you can. It will catch you up as to where we are now. So today, I'm going to come from chapter 6 of Romans. Um, and, and, and I'm going to kind of tell you why I want to come from chapter 6 because every, not every day, but Monday through Friday at 12 p.m., we have a men's prayer group. It's a Zoom call. Men from all over the United States, North America, are on this call. And, and some people have called in from Germany different times because they travel from the United States and they didn't want to miss the prayer call. But, um, but every day, and you're invited, every, it's, a, it's, it's four men, all the, all the brothers we Zoom in, who, who, those of us that have the availability, uh, we'll, I'll make sure that we have that information on our website. Uh, but 
we were on this prayer call, and while we are on the prayer call, we were talking about the book of Romans, and, and know this, the book of Romans is very direct. The book of Romans is not for the faint at heart. It's not for those that, easily, that are easily offended. But if you love truth, and if you love truth even at the expense of a little hurt, you'll love the book of Romans. Um, so when we were on this prayer call, the, the, the brothers on the prayer call, one of the brothers said, as we were discussing Romans 6, he said, um, he said, well, when the Lord saves us, okay, let me, let me backtrack. Another brother was asking, hey, how can you live free from sin? I know the Bible says that when we get saved, we're free from sin. How can you live free from sin? Another brother said, well, when you get saved, you no longer have a desire to sin. And uh, I'm the pastor on the call. I'm the, I mean, I'm the, the senior member, I suppose. And, and I try not to contradict, to contradict people on the call just to keep peace. But, but I said to the, to the group, I said, I don't know about you guys, I said, but if there's anybody who lives in a mortal body, who lives in the flesh, I said, I don't know about you, but my flesh wants to sin every day. Maybe it's just me, but my flesh wants to sin every day because the flesh didn't get saved. Your spirit gets saved. Your, your human spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and lives in your human spirit. The human spirit gets saved. It's constantly trying to save your soul. That's your personality. You know your personality does need to be saved, right? Yeah, your mind needs to be saved. And I told the brothers, I said, well, I don't think that statement is true because the flesh wants to sin every day. Here's the thing. I understood what the brother was trying to say. And I told the group, I said, I understand that the brother is simply saying that when the Spirit of God comes in and he lives in your human spirit, you're, you're a new man, a new creature in Christ, and your human spirit doesn't want to sin. In fact, the Bible says it hates sin, okay? So I understood that part, but I also explained to them that your flesh is not saved yet. Anybody in here, your flesh is saved? Okay, okay, just let somebody cut you off on 664. Just let them get you on 64, let them, you know. All right, so I wanted to kind of set that up because it, it goes with what I'm going to talk about. Now, even before we read the scripture, and then I'm going to pray, I want you to, I want, I got to give you the context of Romans 6, the sixth chapter. The fifth chapter of Romans, the Apostle Paul spends that chapter essentially proving that the Jews and the Gentiles are both sinful. Amen? And he shows that all men have to be redeemed, must be redeemed through Christ by faith, because Ephesians 2 and 8 says, for ye are saved by no <laughs> I tricked you. For you, that's okay. That's what I'm here for. We are for we are for ye are saved by grace. For ye are saved by grace through faith, not of yourselves, lest any man should boast. Right. So that's what the, the, the that the apostle Paul was saying. Okay. But then in Romans the fifth chapter it goes on and Paul says, um, where where sin abounded, where it increased. Grace did much more abound. You know, wherever you had a lot of sin, you have more grace. Isn't that true in your life? There's always going to be more grace to cover the sin. Right, right, right. And so that's where we are now. That's, that's what Paul said. He said, hey, wherever there's more, wherever there's a lot of sin, there's more grace. Okay, now Romans the sixth chapter, verses one and two. I'm going to read it for you. It says, Paul says, what shall we say then? In other words, as a result of what I've just said, where there's a lot of sin, there's more grace. As a result of what I've just said, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Right, should, should we keep sinning so that we can keep receiving more grace? That's what he's saying. Then he says in verse 2, God forbid. Absolutely not. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Now I need to go to verse 5. So if you have your phone or a Bible, 
You can turn to that or I'll just read it for you. But verse 5. Verse 5 says, For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. I'm sorry. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. 6. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Our old man has died with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He that is dead is freed from sin. Okay, so before we pray, I just want to talk to you from the subject, stop raising the dead. Just stop raising the dead. Do you mind standing to your feet as we go before the Lord in prayer? Thank you, Jesus. This is just an honor and in reverence of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I do understand that there were many prayer postures in the Bible. I'm just choosing this one for us today. Father, in Jesus' name, we give you glory. We thank you for being in our presence. You said we're two or more gathered together in your name. There you are in the midst. Lord, we thank you for being with us. Bless your word today. Bless the hearer of your word and bless the doer of your word. Let someone receive your son Jesus through the preaching of the gospel. In Jesus' name, let the congregation say amen and amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, stop raising the dead. Let me ask you an easy question. And, and maybe you've experienced this, maybe not, but let me ask you this question. Have you ever in your life had an experience, gone through something? Have you ever gone through something and then you said to yourself, if I never go through that again, it will be too soon. Let me let you think in for a second, because I know, you're, I know uh, uh, your mind is racing like a movie screen right now. If I never go through that again, it would be too soon. If I never see that person again, come on somebody, if I never see that person again, it would be what? It would be too soon. If I never taste that thing again, you eat at someone's house and you're like, oh, Lord Jesus. If I never taste that meal again, it would be what? It would be too soon. If I never had another friend like them. Because you know the saying with friends like you, who needs enemies? If I never had another friend like them, it would be what? Too soon. It, it, you don't want anything to do with it. You don't want anything to do with them. You don't want anything to do with anything that reminds you of something that reminds you of them. Oh, yeah, you, you know somebody like that. You know a situation like that. You, you know an organization. You know something, and, and you don't even want to hear their name. You won't say the name. Made me think of that song that says, Say the name. Of Jesus. You won't even say the name. If someone around you says the name that you don't want to hear, you leave their presence because you had an experience with that. If you were driving by the building that they may be in, you turn around. Let me come closer to home. Maybe you go to the grocery store and you're in aisle two, but you see them in aisle nine. All of a sudden, you decide, I don't need mangoes today. I, hubby is just going to have to go without the steak dinner tonight because so-and-so is in the building. Mm. Some of us don't even like certain smells because of the experience that we had. 
I'm going to let that sink in. I'm going to let that sink in. Some of us don't even like certain smells of cologne and perfume because of the experiences that you had. Some of us, we don't even use certain phrases because it's a phrase that somebody we knew used. I have removed certain words out of my vocabulary as a result of some of my experiences. I have shortened the resources of my vocabulary because of people. And when you have an experience like that, you're just done with it. You don't want anything to do with it. And, and, and it's not that there's hate in your heart. There's definitely not hate in your heart, but you're having an awful hard time trying to find the love. And then you read the scripture that says, pray for your enemies. You're like, I, I, I think that that was in the lost books. That's not supposed to be in there. I think there are a few of us that understand what I'm talking about. So I want somebody to say, stop raising the dead. Romans, the sixth chapter and verses one and two says, what shall we say then? Isn't that, that kind of fits to what I'm talking about. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein, live any longer therein. Listen, I told you that I understood what the brother in my prayer call was trying to say. I understood that he was trying to say that once you get saved, your spirit doesn't want to commit sin anymore. But I know that the flesh wants to sin. It's tempted daily. If you don't think your flesh is tempted daily, well, let's go to the scripture that says in Hebrews 4 and 15, where it says that Jesus our great high priest, was tempted on all points, like as we are, yet without sin. You see what I just did? I just read the scripture without reading the scripture. It says that Jesus, our great high priest, was tempted on all points, but yet without, yet without sin. And let me say this to you. Do you think that Jesus is going to be tempted and you're not? <laughs> Are we better than Jesus? Are we stronger than Jesus? Is our, do we have our flesh under control better than the master? Oh, what did Paul say? God forbid. God forbid. God forbid. Peter himself said that Satan goes about like a roaring lion, trying to see who he can devour. His mission is to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And, and, and that's that, that steal, kill, and destroy is the, listen to this word, is the culture of Satan's team. You, you know how they talk about certain companies have a what? Have a culture. Certain professional teams have a what? They have a culture. They have a culture. And I want to encourage you about something. I want to encourage you that uh, 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 even though his, he, 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 Satan's team has this culture, he lost some of you to a better team. We all used to play on that team, but he's lost some of you to a better team. You've become a free agent and you signed with a better team. Mm. Okay, listen, I have to admit, I'm a sports fanatic. I love sports. I can't play all sports, but I love it. When I came to church today, I was talking to Corey and I was asking Corey why the Dallas Cowboys traded Jalen Smith. I know that means nothing to most of you. <laughs> so I heard somebody say, it does to me. <laughs> I asked another brother in the church this morning, I said, I said, do you like the Cowboys? And they said, oh, no. <laughs> I love it. But in professional sports, you have what are called free agents. A and here's the thing. Free agents are under no obligation to the current employer because the contract has expired. And so they're called free agents. They're, they're, they're at liberty to sign with any other team they choose to sign with. They're at liberty to go any way they want. Whoever makes them the most tempting offer is the team they typically sign with. Would you agree with that? Right. And, and the team that they go, they can go with that team because they're a free agent. And, and because you're a free agent, 
For you and I, we are free agents. But here's the thing. You're a free moral agent. You're a free moral agent. You have the choice to sign with any team you want. And one thing I never understand is why anybody would sign up with Team Jesus and then become a free agent and go back and sign up with the old team. Did you know that the reason you left the old team is because of the culture? The reason we left the old team is because of the pain and the betrayal and the depression and the oppression. The reason we left the old team is because it didn't pay well enough. Oh, you didn't hear me. Here's the thing. On the old team, the wages of sin was... Oh, but when you sign with your new team, the gift of God is eternal life. Okay, let me, let me get back. Let me get, let me get back. Let me get back. Somebody in here, you, you're a pro athlete in the spirit. I love it. I love it. I love it. But here's the thing. Some pro athletes have another option. What they can do is this. They, they, some of their teams, so let's say uh, 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 my brother back here, let's say that you're, you're on a four-year contract and you're in, year, you're in year three, month 10. Your team will offer you a lucrative and attractive contract so that, th so that you will sign with them before your contract expires so that they don't lose you from that team. Is everybody with me? You understand? I want you to know, I want you to remember something for me. Re for those of you that have accepted Christ, for those of you that are saved, I want you to remember what it was like right before you gave your life to Jesus. I want you to notice that right before your heart was ready to give your, you were ready to give your heart over to Jesus, I want you to notice that Satan tried to get you to sign a contract because he made things more lucrative. He made things more attractive. He sent the right people into your life. He sent the right job. Sometimes he would send you a job that paid you more to get you away from the person that's been ministering to you for years. Satan doesn't mind giving you a six-figure job so he can keep you from getting saved. He doesn't mind giving you a house on a hill so that you won't give your heart to Jesus. And then what Satan will do is he gives you this attractive offer because he knows you're about to become a free agent. Oh, my God. He knows that his culture is no good. He knows that people leave his culture because it's just it's stressful and it makes them want to commit. You should finish that. It makes them want to commit suicide. That's Satan's culture. S Satan will give them much money, then make them commit suicide. And then you say, because you're on a different team now, you look over, you're like, oh man, why would they leave the Green Bay Packers? You say, well, why would they do that when they had all that money? Listen, money doesn't do anything but make you more comfortable while you're going through your problems. Lord, that doesn't mean I don't want money. It just means that it only makes you more comfortable. It does not remove your problem. It gives you options. Somebody say money gives you options. Amen. So I encourage you, if you want to start a business, if you want to go out and be an entrepreneur, I encourage you to do that, but don't make that the priority over heaven. Amen. So, so Satan will send you whatever he needs to send you in order to entice you to stay with his team. But the reason uh, professional athletes become free agents is because sometimes they want to test the market. They want to, they allow their contract to expire. I mean good players. You know, the, the franchise player. Allow their contract to expire, even though they've been offered a lucrative deal, because they want to step out and they want to test the what? The waters, or test the market, test the waters. But can I say this to you? If you have accepted Jesus Christ, if, 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 if you're on his team, don't let your contract expire. Don't step out and test the waters. Because Peter walked on water, but you might not. And the grass is rarely greener on the other side, on the other side, on the other side. And then remember, people who test the waters, they have this saying. They say, uh, they say I, I'm betting on myself. 
I'm, that's, that's the popular thing in this culture today. I'm betting on myself. I'm betting on myself. I can do it. Well, okay. I, I, I can understand that if you're an, an engineer, an architect, if you, if you have some great, some skill that you can use to start a business, whatever that may be, okay, bet on yourself there. But don't bet on yourself spiritually. Because you will fail every time. Don't, don't bet on, don't bet on, have, have, you ever, have you ever noticed that the flesh, what you're betting on, is unreliable? Have you ever noticed that it lies to you? I, I played basketball a couple of years ago, uh, several years ago with some of the brothers in the church. And one uh, brother, he, he was a little more mature in age, and we encouraged him not to play that particular day because he hadn't played in a long time. And when you don't use it, you come on somebody. And so we were out there and he decided to play against the pastor's better judgment. And so he's out there and he was smart. He didn't move most of the game. Barry, he just stood there. We passed him the ball. He passed it back. We're like, good job. You're playing a great game today. And then after about 40 minutes, he must have gotten warm and his body lied to him. And told him, you know what I'm talking about, Sister Williamson, and told him he could do something that he couldn't do. And he made a very fast movement. And when he made that movement, he tore his Achilles. I said all that to say, your body is unpredictable. Your body is unreliable. And your body is weak. Never bet on the body. Okay. Romans, the sixth chapter. I told you Romans is like the raw, it's raw meat. Amen. You have to love the truth. Romans 6 and 1. Let me, let me just say this, read it again. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? The reason Paul is saying, how shall we that are dead to sin continue to live in it? It's because some people were continuing to do what? <coughs> live in it. Church people. The saints, your brothers and sisters, they were continuing to live in it. So Paul said, no, 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 we shouldn't do that. And, and they, 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 these were people that had professed Jesus Christ, but they were continuing to live in it. And I want to tell you something. This is a big news flash. This is a public service announcement. I want to tell you that even after you get saved, the desire to sin is still there. Can we do like, uh, most of you may not even know who Joan Rivers is, but Joan Rivers used to say, can we talk? Can we talk? That's why Paul said in Romans, the seventh chapter, oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, he said, I, he said this, this flesh is a mess. And then Remember this, the, body, uh, the, the Bible says that flesh, I'm sorry, that sin is pleasurable. The, the reason we stayed in it so long is because it was fun. It was pleasurable. But I want to tell you three things about sin that I never want you to forget. Number one, sin will always let you down. It will always let you down. It will always let you down. It will always let you down. Number two, sin will always disappoint your expectations. In other words, sin overpromises and under underdelivers. Number three, you will always be frustrated with the results of sin. Isn't it something how Satan gets people to commit a sin, then he laughs at them after he commits it, and then he causes the, res the consequences to make their life even harder? Man, he's a devil. He is the devil. All right, and so th the point is this. Even if you get saved, you'll still be tempted to sin. So the Apostle Paul said over in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, he said, I have to keep my body under subjection. Those of you, I told you I'm a sports fanatic. If you watch any type of wrestling or MMA or any type of wrestling, you find out that there, there's something they do. They, they pin someone. And they hold the person down. If you hold them down long enough, then the match is over. 
Paul said, I hold my body down. I keep it under subjection long enough so that it will give up. Oh, yeah. That's what fasting is all about. That's another Bible study. Sorry for mentioning it. That's what fasting is all about. So here's what I want you to do. Don't gamble with eternal life. Salvation is not worth the risk. Heaven is not worth the risk. Somebody say, stop raising the dead. Now we're just going to go to verse 5 of Romans, the sixth chapter. We're almost there. It says in verse 5, For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man, the old, the old you, is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Verse 7, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Verses 5 through 7 essentially says, listen, you've been baptized with Jesus Christ, in other words, you were baptized into his death. When, when, he went, when, he, when you went down into the, into the spiritual water, he took away your sins. You've been baptized with him, right? Then it's saying that your old man, the old you, your old personality is now crucified. It was literally nailed to the cross. All those old words we used to use, nailed to the cross. The old habits, what? Nailed to the cross, right? The, the, the sin, the, the attitude, it's supposed to be nailed to the cross because you've experienced a co-death with Christ and now you're free from sin. How many of you have a car or have driven a car? Have a car or have driven a car? Amen. All right, very good, very good. Let me ask you a question. What do you do? when you come out to your car and the car battery has died. I don't mean it's lost the charge, it's died. In other words, Barry, you, you take it to get it tested, the test says it's dead, and then you take that battery, and what do you do? Do you put it in your garage and hold on to it? No, you throw it what? You throw it away. Why do you throw it away? Because it's dead. It's no good to you. It's of no use to you. There's nothing in the battery. There's no life in the battery. And wouldn't it be foolish a month later to go back to that dipsy dumpster, climb over the side wall, get into the trash can, find your dead battery, and try to use it again? But you wouldn't do that because the battery is what? The battery is dead. The battery is dead. That's what it means to be dead to sin. That means it's, it, 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 it doesn't make sense anymore to go back to sin. It would be a contradiction to go back to sin. I'm not going to get that battery out of the trash can because it's no good to anyone. How many of you know sin is no good to, to anyone, to anyone? And, and on top of that, you've got a brand new life a brand new battery and it's running fine it's working fine right so, so going back into a life of sin is it's like cleaning your garage out anybody ever tried that one you know you know that doesn't work does it? but but it's like cleaning your garage and purging that's my wife's word purging the garage of all the stuff you haven't used in at least two years. That would be 90% of most of our garages. And, and then you purge, you spend an entire week because you know, you know what you do. You go to the garage and you look at the wall and you say, okay, yeah, this tool, I, I haven't used it in 16 years, but what if I need it? And you put the tool back up on the wall. Then you go over here and you see this, this hose and you're like, oh, this hose, this hose, this hose was so expensive. I haven't used it in 17 years, but this hose, what if somebody needs it? And you put the tool back up on, the hose back up on the wall. That's why it's so hard to purge the garage, so I'll give you a week. So we spend a week cleaning the garage out. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Pastor Rob. 
I give you a week to clean the garage out. You clean the entire garage out. The trash man came and picked up your stuff. And now, and now the tool is gone. It's dead to you. It's of no use to you. You couldn't go to the dump and find it if you wanted to. The, the, the holes that you wanted to hold on to so dearly is now gone. The, the, the W and M, waste management, came and picked it up, and you couldn't go back to it. It's dead to you. All of the old stuff that you got rid of is dead to you. It's of no use to you. And then your wife out of town. In the next month, buying back all the old stuff that you got rid of. Somebody say, God forbid. God forbid. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God forbid. And I want to tell you, it, you've got to stop raising the dead and stop letting dead things. Let me, let me let you go. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I don't need no amens. I'm guilty. <laughs> okay, so let me ask you another question. Why is it that when God gets you out of a bad relationship, you sign the divorce paperwork, you, you, you send your last text, you block the number. They can't even DM you. You, you take the contact out of your phone. Why is it when he gets you out of that relationship, you want to go back? Do you remember that the reason you got out of the relationship in the first, uh, in the first instance, the reason you did is because it was a problem. It was problematic. It was probably hurtful. You probably were betrayed. The reason you got out of that relationship is because it was destructive and depressive and disappointing. Come on, somebody. That's the reason you got out of the relationship. You can't go back now. You're dead to the relationship. You told him off. You told her that she wasn't the one for you. After she took your money. Threw a brick through your front windshield. Oh, I'm going to work this because, brothers, you know, if she, she does that, you're not going back. Oh, yeah. But the reason you got out of that relationship is because it wasn't working for you. There was too much pain there. There was too much heartache, too much, depress too much depression and oppression. There, it just wasn't working for you. But, but here's, here's the thing that kind of amazes me. It amazes me that when a person uh, comes out of a volatile, destructive, unhealthy relationship, it amazes me that they make a choice to remain friends with that person. Listen to what I said. Volatile, unhealthy, and destructive. I'm not saying if you have an amicable uh, split, you know. I understand, you know. It is what it is. But you might want to be careful about being just friends. Ooh, some of y'all are thinking. Did you know that spiritually, some believers try to remain just friends with sin? Oh, yeah. Now, they were married to it. But then they got a divorce. And the, 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 the sin spouse was volatile and destructive, self-destructive. It was holding them down and betraying them. So they divorced it. But then some saints want to remain friends with it. You know, they don't want to be married to it. They don't want to live with it. They just want to see it once in a while. Ooh, somebody say, stop raising the dead. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. And then here's the thing. You've already gotten into a relationship with another person. 
You, you already have a ring on your finger, and the relationship with the new person is far better than the relationship with the old person because the relationship with the old person was destructive, unhealthy, volatile, depressive. But sometimes people, when they're, uh, they come to Christ, they want to remain friends with that old sin at, because they just want to visit the bottle every once in a while. They just want to visit Marlboro every once in a while. They want to visit that habit or that language every once in a while. Just friends, just friends. Just fr Somebody say just friends. Just friends. But remember, you're in a new relationship with Jesus now. And the relationship that you have now with Jesus is so much better than the relationship you had with sin. And he treats you so much better. And he loves you so much more. And he respects you for who you are. Oh, come on, somebody. For who you are. I know, that's the thing. You want to be respected. He respects you for who you are. Did you know that the deeper your relationship is with your new spouse, let's say spouse or boyfriend or girlfriend, the deeper your relationship is, the less you will want to go back to anything or anyone. The deeper your relationship with God is, the less you will ever want to go back to anything or anyone. That's how it works. We won't go back to somebody or something that's dead. We won't go back to an old relationship with sin that's now dead. Do you, let me ask you a question. How do you deepen your relationship with whomever you're dating or are married to? How do you do that? Spend time with them. Talk to them. Be in their presence, right? Get to know them. How do you deepen your relationship with the Father? Spend time with him. Talk to him. Get to know him. That's what the Lord is looking for. The disciples walked with Jesus. Spent time with him. They talked with Jesus. They, they shared their lives with him. And finally, 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 they felt comfortable enough to say, Master, teach us to pray. Some of us need to spend time with the Lord in prayer. We don't need a new job. That's not the problem. We don't need a six-figure salary, more money. That's not the problem. Many times God withholds a financial blessing because he knows that certain people can't handle it and that the money would take them further away from him. We don't need a new husband or a new wife or a new boyfriend or a new girlfriend because that's not the problem. Do you know what the problem is? The problem is that we need to deepen our relationship with the Father. And we need to stop trying to raise the dead. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Mm. How do you do that? You pray. In fact, Paul said, he said, I don't just want you to pray sometimes. He said, I want you to pray without ceasing. He said, don't stop praying. Keep praying. There's one psalm that, that, that David prays, and he says, Lord, he says, if I ascend to heaven, you're there. He said, and if I descend to the lower parts of the earth, you're there. In other words, you can't get away from me. But when you love somebody, you don't want to get away from them. So I want to encourage you today. Two groups. 
those of you who have accepted Christ, those of you who are saved, but sometimes the enemy tempts you to uh, go back to that relationship with sin. I want to pray for your strength, and I want to pray that God would help us to, you remember, hold the body down, to pin that body, to place your flesh under subjection so that it will obey the Lord. But then most importantly, I want to pray for those of you who haven't joined the team yet, have not accepted Jesus into your heart yet. But here's the thing. You're here today, and you're, you're right there. You're ready. You're ready to give your heart to him. But Satan is coming around offering you a bigger contract. He's telling you, if you just stay out there, you can have more girlfriends, more boyfriends. You, you, you can have more money if you just stay out there. But the Lord is saying to you today, you are a free moral agent. And you've got a choice. I want everyone to stand. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And even as you're standing, I want you to stay prayerful. I want you to stay prayerful. I want you to stay prayerful. And I want to challenge you today that even right where you are, while you're standing, right where you are, I want to challenge you today. I want everyone to close your eyes. Lift your hands if you're able to. In surrender to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Right where you are, under your breath or out loud, you can say, thank you, Jesus. This is not about us. This is not about man. This is about Jesus. This is about your life. This is about where you will go when you close your eyes for the last time. And the team that you're on, the culture that you have allowed yourself to be in will determine your eternal destination. And today you can make a choice. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to challenge you to make that decision today for Christ. If right now you know that you're in the same relationship that we all used to have with sin, we lived a life of sin, but you want to, to, you want to come out of that, you want a new relationship with God and with Christ, even with every head bowed and every eye closed, I'm going to challenge you to step into the aisle even as I'm speaking. Just step into the aisle, step into the middle aisle, step into the aisle so that the Spirit sees you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Don't let the pool of the world hold you in the culture that has been oppressing you. Don't let that relationship with that person influence your decision for Christ. Will there be one today that would give everything to Jesus? I know he requires much of you, but the reward is great. Will there be one? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want you to sing this song with me. All to Jesus, I surrender. All, all to Him. I freely give, please. I will ever, I will ever love and trust him and trust in his presence, 
His praise. I will daily live. Daily. Can you sing that with us one more time? All to Jesus. All You're just saying this to the Lord. Jesus. To Jesus. I'm surrendering everything to you. I surrender. I give you everything, Jesus. All to Him I freely give. All to Thee. Sing it to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In his presence. In his presence. Daily lives. Then the song says, I surrender all. Come on, everybody. Song, such an easy song. I surrender, I surrender. I surrender all. all to thee, my blessed Savior. All to thee. Thank you, Jesus. you for your word. Thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, thank you for every person that's in this place that is a believer and that's not a believer. We thank you. Thank you for the word of God. Father, we thank you for showing us that we don't have to keep raising the dead. But Lord, for every person in this room that's been struggling going back and forth into a relationship with sin, Lord, I want to, you want you to strengthen them with might by your spirit in the inner man. Lord, there's a husband who wants to pray for his spouse. There's a wife that wants to pray for her husband. Lord, I want you to strengthen. Lord, there's somebody in here that there's spouse is not saved and they've been praying and praying and praying and praying my God and praying and praying and Lord they've been faithful Father we want you to save that spouse in the name of Jesus honor the faithfulness of that husband or that wife in Jesus' name Lord I want you to keep us help us to hold our body down help us to live for you because you said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God. The gift, somebody said the gift of God is eternal life. Say that one more time. The gift of God is eternal life. And say this, say it's mine. In Jesus' name. Come on and give God a great big hand clap of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Amen. You may be seated very briefly. We just want to make sure. We're, thank you so much. I always like to have Pastor Yaz come back and if there are any final announcements. But let me say this to you. 
If you would like to become a member of Harvest Church, if you're looking for a church home, you maybe you've been visiting for quite some time and you're saying, now is the time, I want to make that decision. I want to say this to you. We would like to meet with you. Now we'll have to show you where we're going to meet, but we'd like to meet with you right over here in the corner and then we'll go to a room uh, because